guys, it's Carbon Rhino and today we're gonna have a look at Dungeonology The Expedition, a new game from Ludus Magnus Studio, coming to Kickstarter very soon, the 9th of April. And I'm also giving away this beautiful pre-production copy to one of you. Stay until the end of the video to find out how you can enter the giveaway. So Dungeonology takes place in the University of Rocca Civetta, which is the first of its kind to study dangerous monsters and mysterious clans hidden in the Italian lands. In this game, you play as scholars competing to submit the best thesis in order to get the chair of the new professor in the subject of dungeonology. I would say it's sort of like a more cheerful dungeon crawler set in a more carefree and less dark version of the world of Nova Aetas. And there's exploration, hand management, set collection, and lots of player interaction. So basically, as a scholar, you'll have to study the monsters and their habitat, take notes, stay undercover, and try to avoid exhaustion. Here you have the area of a dungeon you'll be exploring with the other scholars. You have the university campus with students in this bag who will be helping you with your thesis and doing all sorts of chores for you. And you can even sacrifice them if you want to avoid getting tired. And you have notebooks where you'll collect information about different types of things in your study. In the beginning of the game, you place randomly face down a clan card which is the subject of your study for this game and which gives you the minimum points your thesis needs in order to pass, along with some modifiers for the score of each type of information cubes collected. Each player chooses one of the scholars with different stats and abilities and places the card on their notebook. The scholars start with the number of students, have a maximum movement they can do and have a maximum hand size of trick cards. To set up the game, each player gets their students and draws a number of trick cards based on their turn order. The first player gets one trick card, the second player two trick cards, and so on. Then you select randomly, without revealing it, a panic card and place it on the university campus. The panic card activates mechanics that will lead to the end of the game and provides instructions for the final phase of the game, which is called the maximum alert. They do the same for the clan card, which remains hidden until the end of the game. Then players choose or randomly select an alert card and place it face up on top of the panic card. The alert card basically sets the difficulty of the game. You can choose from easy, medium or hard and it tells you the number of students to place in the university bag. We also have the red students, who are the infamous students belonging to the evil Omega Brotherhood, and they try every way that they can to hinder the scholars in their quests. In the game, you draw students from the university, the green bag, and the grey ones are placed in the bonfire area of the university campus, and from there they can go to the scholar's aid. The red ones, when drawn, go to these slots on the alert card, raising the alertness of the dungeon inhabitants, and they trigger these bad effects for all the scholars. The university contains both red and grey students, so when you need to draw a student from the university bag, there's always the chance that you might draw a red student. And in that case, you place them on the alert card, and you also get a jinx card. If the slots on the alert card are finished and another infamous student is drawn, it has to be placed on the panic card, revealing it. The game continues from the maximum alert point, which we will explain later on, and it basically signals that the game is going towards its end. In order to collect an information cube from a dungeon zone, the scholar needs to perform the action of a study, in which they do a stealth test as they try to remain undercover and study the dungeon and the life there. To pass a stealth test, they need to generate a stealth value by discarding trick cards and adding up the bonus values, which are the blue numbers shown at the top left of the trick cards. To get the information cube, you compare your stealth value to the alert value of the zone. If it's equal or higher, the scholar gets it and places it in their notebook. In the opposite case, if the stealth test fails, the scholar gets an exhaustion token and draws a random student from the university bag. To avoid getting an exhaustion token, the scholars can always sacrifice one of their students. 
Some effects in the game can increase your stealth value permanently, giving you a study bonus or they can give you a study penalty, which increases the alert value of the zones. This stat here on your notebook indicates the maximum number of information cubes that the scholar can try to collect during their turn by performing the study action. This one is a stealth combo and if the scholar has collected this combo of information cubes, gets a study bonus which will modify the scholar's study tests, turning the wheel towards increasing their stealth by one point. The same happens when a scholar has reached with their collection of information cubes any of these arrows. There's also some stars at certain places in the notebook. When one player reaches one star with their information cubes, then all of the other players have to flip their cards to their exalted side. The exalted characters may exploit their new and terrible skills to catch up with that player. They remain in this state until they have equal or more stars than the player who currently owns the largest number of stars, in which case they flip their card back to the normal side. Last, we also have the knowledge combo, and when a scholar has this combo of information cubes, they get one knowledge token, which allows them to freely look at the clan card, being careful not to reveal it to their opponents. The trick cards, as we saw already, have this value on the top left used in stealth tests, they have main effects that sometimes can be an action, and they have the auxiliary effects of the cards. When you use a trick card, you can only use it for one of the three things that I mentioned and then you discard it. The main and the auxiliary effects sometimes need you to sacrifice a student to use them or to draw a random student from the bag. And a lot of the cards have this symbol, which indicates you can play them anytime, even at your opponent's turn. So to get back to completing the setup of the game, to randomly select the first player, you will use the randomizer deck. Each player draws a card and the player who has drawn the card representing the highest value information is chosen. The values from the highest to the lowest go caste, riches, worship, militia and civilization. You then shuffle and place the intern deck, the jinx deck and the randomizer deck. You place the starting tile face up on the table and each player places their models on it. The tiles or zones will be drawn while exploring the dungeon are in three piles, each representing a different floor. Last, you pick a boss card. For this prototype, we have Laetus, and you place the miniature on the table. It has two sides. The players need to choose the side they want to play with for this game, and the boss is activated in the game with this symbol. We will see more about the bosses in a bit. Now that we've seen the setup of the game and we've seen some basics of the gameplay, we can see what you can do in your turn. In your turn, you can submit your thesis, you can move and explore the dungeon, you can study, you can try to steal information cubes from the other players, and you can play actions from the trick cards. So the first thing you can do at the start of your turn, you have the chance to submit your thesis. A scholar who has gained at least two stars on the noteboard can declare to submit the thesis even without having looked at the clan card yet. If you declare to submit your thesis, you go to the starting tile, you secretly look at the clan card and you calculate your score modified by the bonuses and penalties indicated on the card. If the score obtained is equal to or higher than the points necessary to submit your thesis, you were successful. Without revealing the clan card, you put it back and the game ends for you, while for the other players the game continues to the maximum alert phase. If, on the other hand, your score was lower and you failed, you remove your highest value information cube, draw a jinx card and end your turn. The second step of the turn sequence is the rest phase. The scholars can perform the rest phase if they want to reorganize themselves and recover, and it is mandatory if the scholar starts their turn with three exhaustion tokens. So when you rest, you get rid of your exhaustion tokens, you move to the starting tile, you may discard one jinx card, and discard any number of trick cards from your hand, and then draw new ones to your hand limit. And if you have less students than your student value, you pick students from the camp to reach it. And after the rest phase, you cannot perform any more actions, your turn ends. 
So if the player didn't submit the thesis and didn't do the rest phase, they can move on to the next phase, which is the movement phase. You can move through as many zones as your speed value. If you don't want to stay in the zones already on the table, you can draw a new one and move on it. You then place the information cubes offered and pay attention to the effects of the specific zone, like the fact that it has stairs and leads to another floor, or it may have a passage or a penalty. In the starting tile, the scholars cannot suffer the effects of the trick cards, nor can they play them to hinder others. When you draw and place a new zone, you must link it, choosing a side so that at least one passage is connected between the two tiles, like this or like this, for example, and you have to move there. Then we've got the action phase, in which you can do only one of the available actions. One action is to study. Thus, you try to collect information cubes from a zone. This works in the way that we saw earlier, so you do a stealth test by playing trick cards. If you want to get more than one information cubes, then you increase the alert value by 1 if you want to get 2, by 3 if you want to get 3, by 10 if you're going for 4, and so on. After you have chosen your trick cards, each of your opponents, in clockwise order, may play trick cards against you using the instant effects or the auxiliary effects and try to raise the alertness level and make you fail your stealth test. When the round gets back to you, you can play additional trick cards to end the action using the auxiliary effects. Another action in the action phase you can do instead is the espionage. This allows you to try to steal information cubes from other scholars who are in your zone or in a zone adjacent and linked. To do that, you must sacrifice one of your students and you must indicate which information cube you want to steal and do a stealth test. The alert value in this case is the point value of the selected information cube shown here plus the number of students in the target's possession. So, you need to discard trick cards with stealth value equal or higher than the alert value. The target scholar can play trick cards for the auxiliary effects and you can fight back playing trick cards as well to increase the stealth value. And this back and forth can go on until either player stops playing any other trick cards. If you succeed in the test, then you can steal the information cube that you wanted. And if you failed, then you get an exhaustion token and you have to draw a student from the university bag. Last, as another option for an action in the action phase, you can instead play a trick card that has an action on it or do an action offered in some zone effects. Then it's the end of the turn where the scholars can discard some of their cards and draw new ones to their hand size and they get to reveal their Jinx cards. Another thing that's important in the game are the bosses, as sometimes they might ruin your plans and some others you might get some extra information from them. This symbol right here either brings the boss Laetus into the dungeon, if it wasn't activated before, or it moves him three zones towards the direction of a randomized scholar. When Laetus enters a room with scholars, the encounter part of the card is resolved. The game goes on like this until one of the players submits their thesis successfully, or when the slots on the alert card are finished and another infamous student is drawn. In both cases, the game moves on to the maximum alert phase. There is also the rare occasion of the game ending because there are no more information cubes to place in new zones, in which case the game ends immediately. When the maximum alert phase is triggered, you have to first of all reveal the panic card and apply its effects. Now the scholars cannot perform the submit the thesis phase at the beginning of their turn. A scholar who wants to submit their thesis, now they have to end their turn in the starting zone, regardless of the number of stars they have, and immediately perform the submit the thesis phase, and for them the game ends. The other players continue the game until they can submit their thesis too, and it's no longer possible to do the rest phase or place new zones or new information cubes on the zones. Then everyone calculates their score, you add the information cube points from the note board, and you add bonuses and subtract penalties specified in the clan card. The first scholar to have submitted the thesis gets an extra 10 points, the second 7, the third 5, and the fourth 3. Last, you add the bonuses given by any intern cards and subtract the penalties from the Jinx cards. 
And this was Dungeonology The Expedition. You'll find in the description the link to the Kickstarter campaign of the game and also all the information about how to enter the giveaway to win this prototype copy. To enter, you have to find me on Instagram and follow me. This is my handle and then find the post of me about Dungeonology. Give it a like and tag a friend and you'll enter the giveaway. It's open worldwide. It starts right now and it closes the 30th of April. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you'll enjoy the game and I'll see you in the next video.